Imagine having the power to predict the future of your business and to unlock hidden patterns in your customers. This would allow you to make data-driven decisions that propel you ahead of your competition. Welcome to the world of propensity models where we can demystify your customer behaviors and allow you to engage with your audience in a way that you never could before. In this video, I will show you the steps to implement a propensity model. Welcome to our step-by-step -step guide of implementing a propensity model. A propensity model is the key to unlocking powerful insights into your customer behaviors. Let's get started. As with any data initiative, the first step of implementation is data strategy. A data strategy is responsible for defining the goal of the project, the data available to feed the project, and ultimately sets a end outcome for the project to be successful. A well thought out data strategy is the key to getting the most out of your data initiatives. After developing your data strategy for the propensity model, the next step is data collection. In the data collection phase, we're looking to build the backbone of the model by finding relevant data to our model outcome. This should be relatively easy if you're using your data strategy as a guide. For examples of data that you might be collecting, look in the video description for a link to our article on propensity model where we describe in detail the types of data that you can find. After you find the data that you want to use, the next step is going to be creating a data set that can be used in the model. To do this, you must process the data that you collected. This includes handling outliers and missing values and possibly combining multiple sources of data into one data set. This is probably the biggest step as far as the amount of time that it takes in the entire propensity modeling process. With your data now clean, the next step is to select a model that's going to work for your data and the problem that you're trying to solve. Two common types of models that are used are logistic regression and random forest models. Selecting one of these two models is based on the size of your data, the data structure, and the outcome that you're looking to produce. With the model selected, the next step is to create a script that builds out the modeling process. This is often done in a tool like R or Python and can be implemented by a skilled data scientist or statistician in order to maximize the output of these models. Two things that you'll want to optimize when doing the model building process is both the accuracy and the stability of a model. If a model is accurate, but will not last a long time, it is not as useful as a model that is slightly less accurate, but is stable and will last a lot longer. After building out the model, it is necessary to implement the model for the business to be able to use the model. A common deployment strategy is to use decile scoring on the output of the model, for instance, if it's a response model, you may only try to contact the top 10% of the customers in the file. You might have thought that implementation would be the last step, but that's not true. Once you implement the model, you need to know that it's actually doing its job. So that is why reporting is the final step. When we're building out our reporting, we want to be able to check regularly on our model performance to make sure it's working. This should also be in an easy to use view that gives you all of your statistics you need to know to understand if the model is working and if it's producing the desired result that was defined in the data strategy. Congratulations, if you went through all of these steps of implementation, you'll have a working propensity model that's driving business value for your business. If you're looking to understand what that business value might be, if you look in the video description, there's a link to the next video that'll give you a real case study of a propensity model that was implemented in a business.